After our experiments last week above the triangle and over the east field, where we detected anomalies 300 feet in the air and Brandon's helicopter was pushed around by some kind of invisible force. Man, you got a big crew with you. We invited the team from Sky Elements out to the ranch to see if they could help us verify and also identify just what could be happening in those two areas. So now we're hoping that Sky Elements can run a safer and much more comprehensive scan over the Triangle and the East Field with their cutting edge drone technology to get us better data and hopefully some answers. The idea of the experiment is to take Sky Elements drones, which are typically used for huge light shows, and launch them over the Triangle and the East Field to watch their illuminated formations against the night sky. That will make it easy to see any deviations in their pre-programmed patterns and hopefully determine the exact location of the anomalies that we encountered last week about 300 feet in the air. We're ready to fly. Fantastic. New drones armed. Turning on lights. Lights are on. All right, we have drones armed, guys. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Look at that. Look at that. Should be just about over the triangle here, guys. Hey, look right here. What we got? Hey, look. We got drones that are out of sequence. Yeah, we do. Right when they reached the 300-foot spot above the triangle, several of them were clearly diverted out of formation by something. Hey, uh, Tyler. I just lost three drones. Losing four, losing five. Well, how many drones do you have connected? So I have 80 disconnected. Something happened because those drones had to return to the ground unexpectedly. So they all landed way sooner than they were supposed to. It's nothing that I can explain. We can fly the grid again and see if we see the exact same behavior. Repeatability is really good. And we do the exact same thing. We still got a rocket ready to go. Uh, yes, I agree. Repeatability, given what we've seen and how unusual it is, I'd love to see if it would happen again. Oh, yeah. All right, drones are ready. Let's roll. Preston, whenever you're ready. All right. Oh, there they are. I see them. There we go. Right here, oh, Tyler. that is cool. Yeah, that is cool. We are hot. The rocket is armed and ready to launch. Copy you. In three, two, one. Rocket just went, guys. Oh, there goes one. Oh, oh, look oh, at the one. One's falling. One's falling. Yeah, they're going to oh, they're going to run into each other. Crazy. Holy cow, look at there that. There goes another one. They're not coming down. Are they bringing them down? Whoa, yeah. that one's way. Whoa. Whoa, what's what's going on there? And I've lost a dis all of them, almost all of them disconnected right now. It's going crazy. Look at it. Way out. Look at that. Just as soon as the swarm of drones flew over the triangle, Something interfered with their controls and inexplicably altered their formation, which Tyler and the team from Sky Elements had never experienced before. Something over the triangle clearly caused it, because as soon as the drones left that area to land, they immediately came back online and reassembled in their pre-programmed formation. Every single time we do something, we seem to find some effect on our experimental system. I'm anxious to fly similar patterns, if not exactly the same pattern, in another interesting location on the ranch, off to the east, where we've seen some very interesting effects in our surveys. What we saw happen to the drone swarm at the Triangle, we couldn't wait to move about a half a mile over to the east field to run the experiment again. Let's hook the igniter up. 30 seconds to take off. 30 seconds, guys. 10 seconds to lift. Oh. Had one go early. Yeah, I was going to say, what, what? the? Oh, we took off. I've never seen you know that. what? What? That's what? not the right one. Drone decided to... Inexplicably, before Preston launched the drone swarm, one just took off on its own and ascended to its pre programmed position. I've never seen that. GPS is on. Stay with it. Remainder of takeoff. Hey, hey, here we go. They had one go early, Travis. I saw that. It's a very flying around by itself, ain't it? Yeah. One of them's acting weird. Oh, look, it flew up to it. Rocket's going hot. Everybody clear the rocket. Armed. Ignition in five, four, three, 
two, one. Rocket's going. Where's the shoot? There it goes. There we go. I mean, that's a pretty nice tight formation right it's there. It's a lot tighter than we were yeah. seeing at the other location. Yeah, near the triangle. We got something right there. Right where? Right where? Right, right where my light's at. There it is. There it is right there. There's a thing hovering over the launch site. Wow. Right there. That's crazy. It just disappeared. It went up into the cloud. They're coming back. Yeah, they're moving down now. One of the brightest UAPs I've ever seen on the ranch appeared and moved slowly across the sky for several seconds, but then it just vanished. What was also very interesting is on this last flight, we had one drone start right before all the others, and we've never seen that. They all go together. They all have the same signal. Well, that one drone that took off was actually in the center of that region of the drones that didn't want to connect. I think this experiment was one of the best things we've done with precision, with so many data points. You know how anxious I am to go <laughs> pull the data off that laser scanner. Yeah. Between Eric's surveillance cameras and Pete's scanning devices, I can't wait to see what comes out in the data once it's all processed. Hopefully, we'll have more visual evidence of whatever we saw in the sky and be able to identify just what it was. We've got Pete Kelsey queued up for a video conference. He's got a huge amount of data to share with us from the drone experiments that we've done out of the east field of the triangle. So uh, I think we should just jump right in. Awesome. Love to see awesome. it. You can see the Mesa here in the background. What is that? It's got to be the rocket. Well, no, no, I'm talking about right there. Oh. That is way over there. They're yeah. rocketing everywhere. That's, that's, so that's a mile right. away. We right. were shooting that's a rocket yeah. down right here, right? So uh, yeah. what on earth is that? So exactly. That's my question. I want to know what in the heck it is that's showing up out there on the very edge of what that instrument can measure. That's in the exact same spot where we saw the UAP come in. All right. So I, I think we need to look at the footage of the ball in the sky and see if it kind of fits in the same location as to what this anomaly is here in the LIDAR data. Yeah, let me bring that up. So there's the object. Well, I took a shot of it with my cell phone, right? And so then from that, I did a 3D model of what the image looked like. And I have that. OK. I have, I have what you put together. OK. I'll bring that up. So now if you notice, it clearly looks like it's two halves. And looking at it, it looks like it actually is an indention, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. There's some dark spot to it. From modeling that, I put this together. And uh, this is kind of my idea of what it looks like. There's dark spots on the end, and it's like a dumbbell, sort of. I've got some data from the Eastfield exercise to share. OK. So this is the sum total of the data that we got off of all four of those drones. And you are seeing all of the maneuvers that those four individual drones underwent during the whole exercise. You know, I'm looking at perfectly well-behaved formation in the East Field exercise. It looks exactly like what I would have expected to see. Yeah, yeah. OK. I think what we ought to do is go over to the other part of the exercise at the triangle. I can't wait to get eyes on that. OK, so here. Oh, wow. Whatever that is, it looks crazy as hell, because I don't remember it ever looking like that. <laughs> Eric's GPS devices were on the four corners of the drone swarm. So the data should have appeared just like it did over the east field, all intact and in one large cube. But instead, it was scattered all around into a shape that looked nothing like what we saw during the actual experiment. So there's a lot to discuss here. One of the really puzzling features of this is what happens when you look beneath the ground. Whoa. Looks like some of them are inside the mesa. Yep. I don't recall any of the drones doing this. No. If I remember right, all these GPSs were on the corners. Mm hmm So how's that in the middle? Turn that up again sideways, Eric, uh, so we can see that tornado-looking shape. Sure thing. You want to focus on this yeah. feature here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Look right there. 
If I was gonna draw a wormhole two-dimensionally, that's what it looks like. There's two funnels connected at the throats of the funnels. I'm just saying, something to think about. Why do we keep getting GPS data that is inside the mesa and underneath the ground? This is an area where GPS has been spoofed how many different times? Yeah. I think we've about seen everything. That is a lot of data to digest. Guys, I got to tell you, th this is some of the best evidence that we've been able to capture. And it just goes to show we've got more work to do in both these places. 100% agree with that.